welcome everyone to this session today we will be discussing module 4 of ec 464 low power vlsi design design and testing of low voltage simo circuit so three factors which we have to consider here are power dissipation area and delay so from the previous modules we all know that Static power is proportional to supply voltage, dynamic power is proportional to the square of supply voltage and delay is inversely proportional to supply voltage. So, if you make proper adjustment between the supply voltage and delay, the leakage power can be reduced. Now, the circuit design style plays an important role in determining the performance, power dissipation and supply voltage scalability. So, generally circuit designs are divided into two types, clocked logic design and non-clocked logic design. Clocked logic design means you are applying a clock and in non-clocked there is no clock applied to the circuit. Clock designs are generally faster but they consume more power. So, it is the, the designer who chooses the style of design based on the circuit speed, circuit size, power dissipation, wiring complexity, etc. etc. So, coming to clock logic families, there are three types dynamic, domino, differential current, switch logic. Now, we will be discussing dynamic and domino logic. So, first we will see what a dynamic logic is. The dynamic logic is a non ratio logic which has two phases precharge phase and evaluation phase. In precharge phase, the clock is low, in evaluation phase, the clock is high. And in dynamic logic, when you consider the case of complex gates, the number of transistors required is n plus 2 whereas in static or conventional CMOS the number of transistors required is 2n where n is the number of inputs. Okay. Now we will see how we can draw a dynamic CMOS. For this consider an inverter. So we have CMOS, NMOS connected, A is the input, VDD, CL is the load capacitance connected at the load. Now, when you want to draw a dynamic CMOS, keep the NMOS session as it is and then you have to provide the clock, right? So, for that, provide a PMOS connected to VDD and here an NMOS connected to ground and then you provide a clock here. The input session and the output session which has the load capacitance everything is same. Okay. Now this is how we can draw a dynamic gate. This is uh, for a simple inverter but for any function the basic concept is draw the, draw the circuit in CMOS logic and then take the NMOS session provide PMOS and NMOS at top and bottom. Uh, for the for the clock okay and input session and everything is as it is now the working of dynamic CMOS can be explained in two phases they are precharge phase and evaluation phase in precharge phase clock is low when clock is low PMOS is on and MOS is off so what happens this capacitor CL tries to charge from VDD and what is the maximum to which it can charge VDD. So, PMOS is on, NMOS is off, output will always remain at VDD because NMOS is off, right. So, capacitor CL is trying to charge to the maximum. Regardless of input, whether you apply an input or uh, whether you provide an input or not, output will be always at VDD, high, output will be always high when clock is low. Now the next case is when clock is high, 
that phase is the evaluation phase where you are exactly evaluating the input provided to the NMO station. Suppose that transistor, uh, let us assume it is T and A is the input provided. Now we know that during the pre-charge phase the capacitor C has fully charged. Now the capacitor CL is trying to discharge, it is trying to find a path to which it can discharge. When you provide a clock high, what happens? PMOS will be off, NMOS will be on. Now, based on this transistor NMOS, that is a, here we have named it T, right? Based on T, based on the input given to T, transistor can be on or off. And based on that, the output can vary. So, let A is the input. Suppose the input A is 1. What happens? Transistor T is on. That means the capacitor CL has found a path. This is a path through which it can discharge. So, the output will be 0. So, when A is 1, P0 will be equal to 0. Now, when A is 1, A is 0. What happens? Transistor T is off which means the capacitor CL retains a charge so output will be high which means A equal to 0 P0 will be 1. So that is the truth table which we are getting in the evaluation phase. Right. So clock is low, output is high, clock is high then based on the input output can vary. That is a working of dynamic gate. Now, let's go for cascading of dynamic CMOS. But consider you have a CMOS network which is connected, cascaded to another CMOS network. Okay, so output 1 is provided as input to the next NMOS session and uh, we are providing the clock same. So in the pre-charge phase, output 1 and output 2 will be high. During the evaluation phase, output 2 discharges before output 1 could discharge. What happens here is that the output 1 and output 2 are always high at the pre-charge phase. But in the evaluation phase or just at the starting of the evaluation phase, when output 1 tries to make a transition, here we have given the input to this NMOS transistor as 1. Output 1 is already 1. That means these two transistors are on. The MN transistor is also on. So output 2 already has a path to which it can discharge. So, just at the starting of the evaluation phase, output 2 has found the path and it discharges before output 1 could discharge. So, that, uh, that results in improper output, right. So, that is why dynamic logics driven by the same clock cannot be cascaded directly. That is the disadvantage of dynamic CMO circuit. So, we need a much more good design. So, what is the solution? The solution is to provide an inverter here. Right. So, when you provide an inverter here, even in the pre-charge phase output is high, what comes to the input will be low. Right. So, this is how you can draw a domino logic. It is same. That is, a, it is an n-type dynamic logic block followed by a static inverter. Now what happens if domino logic is cascaded? So uh, suppose this is a domino logic, you are providing an inverter here and the next circuit is also a domino logic, means you have an inverter here. What exactly happens is, during the pre-charge phase, all the inputs will be, all the output, output 1s or output 2 will be high, but the inputs will be set to 0, right. And during the evaluation phase, when, when the output 1 makes a transition, then only 
the transition affects the second stage and here during the variation phase when the output 2 makes a transition that affects the next stage so this effect ripples through the whole cascaded chain similar to a line of falling dominoes that is why it is called a domino logic hence the name okay so the disadvantage which you are seeing in dynamic logic is compensated with the help of a not gate and domino logic can be cascaded without any problem now let's see an example of an implementation of two input nor gate so implement the two input nor gate using complementary cmos dynamic cmos and domino cmos so this is a conventional cmos diagram pmos on top and nmos at the bottom pmos connected in series nmos connected in parallel output is taken and you can get the function y is equal to a plus b whole bar now when you have to draw a dynamic cmos what you do is you take the nmos session as it is and provide pmos nmos on top at bottom provide the clock take the output that becomes a dynamic cmos now to convert the dynamic cmos into a domino cmos just provide an inverter at the inverting gate or you can also provide a cmos inverter as at the output and that becomes a domino cmos logic okay so i hope you have understood the concept of dynamic and domino cmos and how you can draw the circuit diagrams for any question right thank you